This is NBC 10 News. All right, let's go back to Keith and back to you, Keith and Lori in the studio. All right, Louie and Katie, thank you very much. Now, just to bring you back in here, Jerry Sandusky has been sentenced to 30 to 60 years behind bars. We've heard from both sides so far. We've heard from Joe Amendola. We've heard from lead prosecutor Joe McGettigan about this. Amendola saying that there will be an appeals process. So this is a big day for Sandusky, obviously, an even bigger day for the victims, though. Dr. Sue Kornbluth joins us live now from the NBC10 uh, Digital Operations Center to tell us a little bit more uh, about these victims. She's a psychological professor. You deal with child sex abuse cases. Uh, Dr. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me, Keith. So we've been talking about Sandusky. What is he doing? What does he look like? What is he saying? What about these victims now? What does this sentence mean for them? Well, this is really all about the victims today, and this is really a bittersweet victory. Yes, Sandusky was convicted. However, the victims will have to live with the memories of the abuse that was suffered at the hands of Sandusky. But we must remember how brave these young men were to testify and tell their truth. They gave a voice to the abuse that had gone on for years and put a pedophile behind bars for a very long time. And doctor, you heard Tom Klein, an attorney for victim number five, uh, talking about how his client is going to hear the jail cell slam tonight. Finally, justice in his opinion. How do these victims now move forward from this? Well, moving forward from this is not an easy task at all. And healing is very different for each victim. But they can know in their hearts that they did what they were supposed to do to bring justice to Jerry Sandusky. And so that's comfort in itself. Therapy will take a long time with many of this, these victims. It depends on the severity of the abuse that was done to each one of them and how they process this for themselves. And you talk about comfort. Does this bring closure? It, it's a part of the closure. The, you cannot define closure for a victim of abuse. They have to uh, define that for themselves. Okay, and you've dealt with cases like this in the past, countless cases really. Does the scale of this case make this any different? Uh, the magnitude of this case, of course, makes it different because it was so prevalent in the media and it was everywhere. So there's a lot of shame that has gone along with these uh, boys and young men that have testified. So on that level, uh, they're going to have to learn how to put their lives back together in the midst of media coverage. And doctor, life in prison now for Jerry Sandusky. Put this in perspective for us. You've dealt with victims like this. How difficult is it for a child, um, even a grown man, some of them in their 20s, most of them in their 20s right now, how difficult is it for them to sit in that courtroom throughout this whole trial, some of them, uh, especially these parents too, how difficult is that for someone who has endured that kind of abuse? It is so difficult, and that's why I said in the beginning that they have to be commended for sitting in there today and watching this man constantly and continually lie about what he had done. Jerry Sandusky fits the mold of a pedophile. He has no remorse for his actions. He is manipulative, narcissistic. To sit there and watch this over and over is grueling, but to know that the door will slam to night is what is comforting to the parents and to the victims today. And doctor, when you listened, I don't know if you heard last night when he spoke out on Penn State Radio, uh, giving that three and a half minute long, uh, really kind of delving into how he felt after three months of being incarcerated. Does that mirror exactly what you're saying right now, characterizing this man? Absolutely. Well, we're dealing with somebody that is completely delusional. And people that are delusional in the way that he is believe that they are larger than life, that they are more powerful than anyone. And so, therefore, he would never take responsibility for what he had done. And let's recall what he said, that his heart knows better. How about his mind knowing better? Okay, that's something that he did not mention, and his mind does not know better. Pe pedophiles believe that what they're doing is showing love. That is not love. Molesting young boys is not love. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Sue, uh, Sue Kornbluth right now, sharing her insights with us, Temple University professor.